Oh shit, you know what time it is. It's time for me to tell you what to do. It's time for you to take yourself off to www.patreon.com forward slash Sly Guy Podcast so you can get more slyness in your week. You can get access to the guest episode every Friday. You can get the extra Sly Guy Podcast on a Monday. Oh my God, you get vlogs as well. On top of early access to tickets, other bits and bobs, show information, and just general gossip. I just I just tout, I give gossip, I tell you all the wee secrets about the comedy scene, who's a little bitch, who's doing this, who's doing that. Secrets, I'm like Varys from Game of Thrones, but you only get that over on www.patreon.com forward slash Sly Guy Podcast, especially on a Monday with the extra Sly Guy Podcast. Wink nudge. So if you want to join the revolution, if you want to become a sly hard or a rider sly, whatever you want, get to patreon.com forward slash sly guy podcast. The sly guy podcast is always brought to you by the OGs, the original gangsters, the number one beer for the current mafia. <laughs> Modest beer. I don't know if they are. I just assume if the mafia tried that, they would like it. They'd be like, hmm, I like what this tastes like. I like what this tastes like, motherfucker. It's modest, but it's good. Tastes nice, cocksucker. Modest beer. Check out their website, www.modestbeer.co.uk, where you can sign up to their email bruise letter to just find out what's going on with all things modest. You can find out what beers they have, where you can get them, and you can buy merch. Big up yourself, Modest Beer. And check them on socials as well, at Modest Beer. I'm the Sly Guy. Guys, welcome to the Sly Guy Podcast. This week... We're keeping the guests coming. I don't know why I'm doing it. I don't know why I keep bringing you guests, but you just want it and I'll give it you. I'm like the Wellstone Raider. I just give you what you want and I also give you, if you don't want it, you're still getting it. Obviously consensually, because if you don't want it, you can't turn off. I do want to point that out, but I'm giving it you anyway. And this week, my guest is a guy from either South Armagh or South Down. I don't quite know where because we argued a little bit about it on the episode. He's from somewhere down there. He's not from North Down anyway. He's Darren Matthews. He runs the Panic Station at McCoy's in Newry. He's a great guy. He's from that area where I grew up a lot of a lot of the time. I say grew up. I spent weekends there when I was visiting family. I'm from North Down, born and bred and raised and live here to this day. But that's neither here nor there. It was a fun episode. Darren was great crack. We chatted about a lot of different things. Pondered a lot of different things. But it was a fun episode and hope you guys enjoy it. Bone upper teeth, upper reef, upper. Just enjoy the episode, fuck's sake. Oh, look at that, it's funky. Hey, Darren, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much, David. Thank you for sitting there waiting um, <clears throat> for a minute while I just beat a load of oats into me. Having a busy morning. While well, the production team gets it all organized. Yeah, while well, the production team sorted, I'm um, here. The production team? <laughs> This guy, because I do have a producer, Ben, who people now think is just a figment of my imagination. So this is why we need a production team, you see? This is like one of your split personalities? Yeah, because... Oh, yeah, because you didn't, you didn't turn a light on. I just need a light, you know? Oh, uh, hang on. This is, this is top quality content. <laughs> there we go. Do you think whenever people watch these like podcasts that are produced here, do people think you're in like a, like a big studio? People assume we have a studio for the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Which we do technically have, but it's, it's a tight squeezed room. You know, it's a tightly it's a tightly squeezed room that we're in. We all make it look actually we can't move. We're stuck here. We're here forever. Like I'm, I'm a lot smaller than you, so I take up a bit less space. Mm -hmm. so but, it's not too but bad. I take up loads of space, and what I'm going to do now <laughs> is put my phone on airplane mode because before we start, I've just filled my mouth with oats. So I've oats everywhere. I've an oaty mouth, and I appreciate that made some oats. That's okay. It's, it's bad decorum to do so in front of a guest, but. I feel like we're a bit long in the tooth. We know each other well enough that... I, I should point out that you mean actual oats. You haven't filled your mouth with the wild oats of a man. No. Not I, when people talk about sowing their wild oats. That's not what Dave was doing while yeah, we were... Yeah, because that sounds very much like, thanks very much for being <laughs> on the podcast. I was just sucking a bit of dick. Once, and I mean, I am doing what you would do after you took a load. I'm, hmm, yeah, you know, like, thanks, thanks sure for waiting on me. Well, there's I, nothing in my beard, you know. Well, I got that man's taxi order. When I paid my rent for the studio, <laughs> um, I had to... Do a bit of sucking, but no, we, we've had a busy morning with podcasts and the like, and now I'm just getting around to having some breakfast, and I don't know if you, if you like, I, something has happened to me, the older I've got, hangry. Oh, yeah. Is that a thing? That's been a thing since I was born, so I get that, yeah. No, my no. my nickname when I was a kid was The Bin, because I could eat anything. Like, yeah. I, you just put anything in me, you know, sort of. Oh, or? Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, no. Also an older boy, awkward. Yeah. But, um... <laughs> No, that yeah, that was the whole thing. So it used to be, it was like, give it to the bit. Thank you, thank you. Keep oh, this your face. production, the, the producers sorting out that. Also, yeah. Dave. 
Yeah. This happens to me at gigs, by the way, as well. Whenever mm-hmm. I'm like taking tickets at the door, and then you're like, "Hello, everyone." They're like, "That's the guy who was doing the door." Yeah, which is, like, yeah, which I is, do everything. Yeah, but see, I do have a producer. He does the post edit, and the like. You see, then harder. whenever I, I moved to the studio, I had talked to him about taking on another boy. I said, "Listen, we're looking to have a producer here," and he was like, "No, I'll teach you how to work the stuff, and I'll still edit." And I went, "All right," but sometimes there are tech problems because I am useless. Ah, uh, okay. But the issue it. is that. The issue is my is the, my inability to do anything technology technologically based. Can't even say it technological. No, nope, can't even say it. <laughs> but that's but that's where we're at. And he does the post edit, so it, it's working all right. And I've got the setup and all. I'm kind of learning. And that was twenty twenty two, the year of tech for me. Educate myself, and hopefully next year I'll sack Ben, and get another boy in <laughs> <laughs> to do it for me. That's the plan. Just get him to get him to show you how he edits, and mm-hmm. then he just killed his own economy. You know yeah, because I mean? that's that's another thing that I get hit with there. You know, do you ever do you, do you do any editing yourself, or do you? I, I probably haven't edited anything since I did um, media studies in the tech. That was right, okay. Two thousand two, I want to say. Because I bought some program, and it, this is how they get you. It's like we're going to renew in January, and it's like. A fortune, so I might just not renew that and just keep Ben doing his job. You know are what you, I mean? Are you using it enough yourself? No, absolutely. No, not. okay, no. well, yeah, that's fine. Absolutely not. And then I can never save it properly, it just frustrates me. It takes a day of work, and I go fuck that and close the computer. <laughs> so it isn't worth it. This is, um, I am a man who should just be talking into a mic. I was going to say in front of the camera. No, I'm a man who should be very much behind the camera in a cage do with you, a sheet over it. You know, do you? Based on that assumption, do you find you have more audio streams or physical no, video downloads? My my numbers are audio. Your numbers are yeah, audio. Yeah, my audio's a number. My audio's are numbers. Whoa, my my numbers are audio, but the clips are good to draw people in, and uh, more people are now watching the video. So, guys, that's a good point. If you watch the video, subscribe to the YouTube. It helps. Don't worry. I also have a face for radio, so that's fine. Mm-hmm. So, just listen. The audio listeners are having time of their lives. People watching the YouTube are like, nah, this is a bad day for us. Bad Dude, day when, for I, when I'm on the Sly Guy, I'm, I'm mm. all audio because I'm listening to you at work. Just yeah. Driving around. So yeah, that's, no, that's, what fair. I'm, that's what I'm listening what I am Everything really I do is audio. I am very, very, like, I would be the same. Like, when I consume podcasts, it's always the audio. Same like yourself. If I'm in the car, run going earphones in, just listening as I go. Every podcast I listen to would be audio, really. Yeah, those people that, that will, like, tag you in a thing because mm-hmm. they're watching your your um, your um podcast on their TV. Weird. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I think it's strange. I don't have time for that. Yeah, because I do. I, do you, I thought that is weird. The people who watch the video, do you sit and just watch the whole thing? Or do you, like, do you put it on TV? How do you do it? Or do you put it on the background when you're scooting about the kitchen? I know. I don't know. It's because it's a podcast. That's not really sufficient background noise, is it? Because you mm-hmm. have to tune in. Yeah, you have to think about. Because one minute you're talking about eating notes, and then you miss like a minute, and then it comes back, and mm-hmm. I've accused you of sucking a dick. So, well, I mean, it, usually those two do go hand in hand with me, Darren. You know, that's usually okay. how it kind of works. You know, usually that's it's a safe assumption. Look, we all need hobbies, man. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. True. Okay. But no, it, it's it's nice, and what's a good forum to have, and it's a good. Um, it's just a good platform you know I enjoy podcasting I must say but I do prefer like if someone said to me you wouldn't have any impact on anything you do like listens or views or ticket sales if you just did audio I'd be like well I'll just do audio then. you know I'll just because then I don't have to dress I don't have to like comb whatever's left of my hair I could just fucking be naked and recording in a room by myself weird if I've guessed <laughs> but you know otherwise it's all good weird if you do that but don't tell anybody and then they show up to record and you're like mm-hmm. oh by the way this is totally not what i do so um. yeah because i find as well like stand-up obviously has had a wee bit of a a reputation in the last number of years about certain comedians doing things that maybe aren't the most uh respectable you know that's that that was that was very well worded without mm-hmm. getting a lawsuit well because done. what happened to me at laveries there on wednesday was there was I, i'd been on i must say had a very nice time Love, lovely, lovely Eve, great crowd, enjoyed myself. And I was watching, it was Colin Taylor, Terrell was on. I was watching him just standing you know, at the back. And there was a woman who came up to me and was like, Oh, can I, are you on? Can I, I was like, Oh, I've been. She's like, Oh, we just came to the break and all, blah, blah. Can I get a photo? And I was like, Yeah, of course. But she had her phone out and I could see that the flash was on it. So I sort of said to her, Oh, just, you know, go behind the curtain and I'll show the, the flash. And then she was like, I, I just want a photo. And I was like, Yes. Oh, oh no. Yes, oh, no. absolutely. Just you know, just but have a flash on. I just didn't want you know the flash to go off. So I was thinking, oh no, she's gonna think I was like, oh, back here you come. This is where yeah. they all end up. <laughs> you like my stuff, do you? Mm-hmm. I've got yeah. some stuff you like. Some, oh, nightmare. Yeah. And then oats. Oats. Yeah. 
you know they're always saying and you're full up until lunchtime oh that is uh, that's horrendous so then but yeah we got the photo on his grand but i mean that was it i was just literally didn't want to flash to go off because you know as yourself as an act you do think about things normal people won't think about like when other people are on stage don't be flat out talking don't be on the phones don't be doing distracting things don't have your phone flash you know what i mean things like that i have the weird thing where if somebody checks their phone while mm -hmm. i'm on stage i then presume that the venue's haunted because somebody mm -hmm. just fucking lights up and you're like ah! yeah you know, so is that like you weird. mean an audience member or a like an audience anybody yeah. if, if, if it's in an eye line because a lot of the gigs we do it's kind of darker room the light's on you so when somebody just fucking appears out of the darkness yeah that's fair because like, like the ghost of a fucking Victorian child or something like, hey. but it's a bit weird do you ever see like because obviously you gig a lot and people take photos of gigs now like I don't mind the photos but do like you know it's what? the videos no I never see people taking photos they're fucking ninjas yeah but they're always tagged. You always go on your phone. And you're like, oh, like, oh so thanks very much. How did you yeah. get that? <laughs> I know that's a fair point. They are. Yeah, like, why? Just... Where, where were you behind me? <laughs> yeah, no, but it's it's happening more and more, and it's grand as long as there's no videos, because obviously we're working. I think I think the quality the quality photos that that you do seem to get will be between two people's shoulders. So like mm -hmm. we can't. They've, they've done a wee ninja sort of. Yeah. And then they're checking it, you know. But fair play to them. Because very few of them do it like a mum. You know, like your mum would try mm. to do it, or shit. Like mine would be like all like this and. You know, trying to set it up and would be, you'd very, be very blatant. She's trying to take a photo. Like, my mum took photos when I started going out with Catherine at the start. We went out for, like, the first time I think they met. Went out for dinner. And we could see my mum on her, it wasn't even her phone. She had her iPad. I was her. just about to tell yeah. you the story of my <laughs> man, her iPad. She was trying to take subtle photos on her iPad whilst doing this. You know? And we were like, you know, just ask us. Well, you can have a photo, yeah, yeah. like, you know, it's fine. Um, and then she was like, oh, no, no, I wasn't taking a photo. We're like, all right. Years later, that's probably two, three years later, we were looking at something because my daughter Holly was looking on her iPad. We were flicking through. We found all the, the photos from that night. And she was like the fucking paparazzi chasing David Beckham. There were hundreds of her. Really? Yeah, it was just us. Like, not flattering. You know, if you're going to show somebody's girlfriend they're only starting to go out with, Pose, make it flattering. Could you mean like, like a wee flicker book of them as yeah. you walk across the room? You, you 100% yes. It was wild. And then she was like, oh, I did do that. And they're like, yeah, we, we fully saw it. You know what I mean? You, at the time, you denied it. but So um, my brother moved to Australia many years ago. And as his thing, so mum could keep in touch, he sent her an iPad. What? And he was like, he, like, he was like yeah. I, I got you an iPad, mum. You'd be able to, so we can video call. It was Skype back then. Mm -hmm. Before Zoom was a thing. It's like, you can Skype me and we can, we can chat and you can keep in touch with me. She's like, oh, that's brilliant. She found out there was a camera on it and it started coming to weddings. And so you're taking photos and my ma has got the, the flat screen TV. Yeah. And she's taking photos. And I was like, I'll, I'll take photos and I'll send them to you. Because she has mm -hmm. an iPhone. I'll, I'll send you the photos. You don't need to be doing that. Yeah. And it was wildly distracting. Because uh, most of the time the cover didn't even match her dress. It was a nightmare. And where, where is your mum from? My mum is from where I'm from. She's from Bestbrook outside Newry. See, my mum's from Points Pass. Oh, man. You know, so it's, it's it must be something in the water. You know what I mean? It must be something in the water, those guys. Just like the iPads will be discreet. Never. Yeah. And does your mum have like one of those fold off covers as yes. well? That can double up as like. Yes, it's yeah. down. Yeah. So she's holding like a full, like a full book. Yeah. Cause cause not only is she holding the size <laughs> of the iPad, but then the cover has flopped down. <laughs> yeah. So it's this size. And she's holding, I'm just yeah. like, what are you trying to conceal your identity from yeah. the priest? What no. the fuck? What are you doing? <laughs> just south down mammies, just trying to fucking subtly. Oh, dearie me. To be fair now, Points Pass is in South Armagh, so. Mm -hmm. is, it south, is it South Armagh? Point, well, Points Pass oh, is in Armagh, so yeah. yeah you, it would be. You've got, you've, got, you've got it in the blood, kid. Oh, wow. See, I've got South Armagh in the blood. Wow, I thought it was just south down. I thought it was bad enough. Well, sort of, I suppose yeah. the, you, you sort of go over the ditch and you're in like Lock Brickland. It straddles, so. does it? Straddles. Uh -huh. And also the fact that, so I would have had a, like my dad's, a lot of their family would live in Points Pass. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard it referred to as the pass? Yes. Yeah. I have a lot of that, that problem with like, those little collective nicknames we use. Uh -huh. So like I'm from Bestbrook, but we say the Brook. Brook yeah. But I live in Belfast now, so if I say the Brook, people think I'm from Twinbrook. Oh no. <laughs> and that's bad. So you, do, you don't want to be you, you don't want to be telling yeah. that. So yeah. people say the pass, it's just mm -hmm. like I right, points pass. Because the true know. story, whenever we, I was going out with Catherine, it's again we hadn't been out that long, we stopped on points pass on the train. Oh, and yeah. she was like, Oh Ponyot's pass and I went, No, 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 it's not <laughs> it's not pon no. And she goes, No, it is and I went, No, no, it's, it's points pass you, so how do you know? It's like, Well, hey, I've roots down here, you know, and that's just how I refer to my uncles. <laughs> <laughs> He's a fucking yeah. root. <laughs> <coughs> but yeah, so we, we're from the same neck of the woods. Like I have a lot of a lot of my childhood, well, a lot of stories my mum tells me are all about being in Uri and and being in the past and everything. So it's See, quite, out quite of quite all fun. the comedians that I work mm -hmm. with, you have a 
you have a, like a lovely affinity of Neary because you yeah. have so many childhood memories. Yeah. Like I grew up there, so I'm like, it gets to the point where like I'm bored here. Yeah. And then I moved. Whereas mm-hmm. you're like, any time I was down, it, there was something good happening. Yeah. It's like going to the grannies, getting a Timmy's ice cream, mm-hmm. getting talked to Friar Tucks. It was just it's, all, it's all the cultural it icons. Was, I, and what do we all? Another thing I remember recently, like it's not too far away, but we used to go to it was Drum and Tine. It was like an old yeah, yeah, yeah. park. We used to go there and feed the ducks. That's what I remember about. Drum and Tine used to be up. the uh, priest training college. Oh, so Which I, is why, if you're like, oh wow, this looks like a fucking grand mansion, mm-hmm. the church owned it, that's why. Okay, so as a young boy, I shouldn't have been brought there and left by myself to feed dogs? No. A guy would just come out with a net, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're only feeding dogs as long as nobody was near you feeding the pony. Yeah, you know, I think, right, yeah so. as long as I'm not a South African priest. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to feed my duck? <laughs> no, you're all right. Absolutely not. <laughs> what brings you here? You must be freezing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it was it was good. Yeah, my because my uh, my aunt Peggy lived in Uri, so my granny she died when I was about eight, I think eight, which was very sad. Um, and my aunt Peggy only died probably in the last five years or so. So I'd have still gone up to visit her, and and it would have it was always great. She go up her, there and she goes. Oh, I don't know what the butcher. Can remember the name of the butchers, but she go there. Get us a steak. We have a steak dinner. I go then we go to Timonies on the way home. Great, great. Oh, if it's across from Timonies, it's birds. Yep, that would be the which one. is a farm to fork butcher. Their stuff is fucking yeah, lovely. Great steaks. Connection. They make the sausages that is served in McCoy's Cafe, where we run the Panic Station co- Comedy go. Club. Big shout out to McCoy's. I love the Panic Station Comedy Club as well. It's one of the best, one of the best clubs in the country. But if I have to give one criticism, the stage struggles under my girth. <laughs> I nearly had a wee accent there the last time. Thankfully. Fell off so, it or shit yourself? Nearly just broke it and, and then nearly shit myself <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> it, was, it was an experience. Yeah, if you, if you want to see something funny, um, whenever I took Dave down, you did the gig down in, at Newry City at the football yes. club. Yeah. And Dave walked in like an Irish American being brought to Ireland for the first time. You were like, I'm home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're at the football ground and Dave's like, yeah. my people. I was like, here we are. <laughs> yeah, because Newry. And a corner, like, Kevin. Because Newry ha- has Newry had a bit of a bad reputation with stand up. Like some people would be like, oh, no, not Newry. I think some of the, I think a lot of the guys that we know have a terrible gigs, but mm-hmm. that's because this guy wasn't involved in them. Yeah, Mr. Neary. Neary. what, Mister Neary? Mister, well, yeah. I wouldn't. No, I feel like that's a fitness competition yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that I could maybe also win. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it would that, let, let, yeah. give him the title. I'm if, the king if, of North if, I don't if, I have, if I don't have heart disease by forty, I could probably win the Mister Neary. Yeah, Mister Neary, <laughs> Mister Neary, twenty twenty three. There's a goal for you coming into the new year, an aspirational goal: become Mister <laughs> Neary. And if there is no Mister Neary, you could be the first inaugural. Mr. Nuri champion. Yeah, it's a Jack be... by June, boys. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever Lucky June is. But <laughs> <laughs> it's great. But like, I've, I've done, I mean, I do, I'm going to scud myself here because it's always the way when you say, you talk to Alia somewhere. But I've done um, McCoy's a number of times. I did, there was a place that, I don't know if Paddy McGaggy booked it back in the day. It was like a, it was almost like a wee restaurant. The you Sugar Supper Club, which yeah. no longer exists. It was great. Was very there. Very there. Was the food it, was, was class. I never did a gig in it. There was a party at that, that, you know? I think so. I think maybe one of the staff was just booking stuff. So it was but just it, an interesting idea because they, they were trying everything. They had music yeah. in it, they had comedy in it. It was it was a good idea. We just need we just needed a good room mm-hmm. and out of those gigs that have happened over the years, and then guys do touring shows down there as well. There's the hotel, there's a the town hall, all that kind of stuff. But our gig kind of came out of an accident. I mean, McCoy's McCoy's How came happen? Because basically another venue screwed us over because <laughs> okay. you did the very first one with Mickey where was it in the in McCoy's oh yeah in the McCoo- back oh yes no I thought you like were we were at a wake oh no I, I remember the first and it was still fun what is now the green room it was the venue it only what, held 30 people but what I just want to say on regards to that are you allowed to name the venue that screwed us over are you allowed to say it is it a venue that potentially would you know look after money and give you loans if you needed to <laughs> You needed to buy a house. The credit union? No. <laughs> 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 Fucking your credit union, the bastard. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, no, I don't even feel. Cause, no, because a lot of the guys still use it, so I wouldn't. Yeah, we'll not, we'll not give the beef. That's alright. But, but I, I mean, I, I, there's, there's, there is no beef because it's actually worked out well. Yeah. So since then, was that just a case of Leanne basically pulled you out of a hole to do yeah, that gig? Yeah. She, she helped me. I've known Leanne. I was like, oh, this yeah. fucking thing happened. She was like. Why don't you do one here? I was like, are you fucking mental? Uh-huh. And she's like, no, no, we'll do it. And it was just, the idea of it came about in about fucking 10 minutes. But how long we'll do this, we'll throw fucking food on at half time. And how, how long has it been rolling for now? We started in 20, I think it was 2019, and then obviously the world went to shit. So we got a really good year run at it. Yeah. And then the fucking world closed, and now we're back, but we're we're back with the bank kids. No, it is great. And it's nice to have, I always think you need to have 
the biggest thing with comedy clubs to me are just the consistency of it. You just need to keep going. And the crowds are good there. They're always you're always guaranteed a good night there. And I love it. I can't wait to get back down again. Twenty twenty three I'll be back. Very few places will you get a, a gig you can bring your own booze and you get pizza at half time to mm-hmm. keep you half sober. Yeah. We're it's very a- evident of that where the first one started out very politely. You know, we bought the wine or six cans mm-hmm. of beer, and then once people figured you can bring whatever you want, yeah, uh, it's nearly so. Uh, people were <laughs> somebody just set up a gin still at the back one time. Oh, you go. And, and by the time the gig was over, they just had a ten glass. It was yeah. <laughs> they were good. But that's that's, that's that's the beauty of it, isn't it? You can do whatever you like within reason, which is nice. But I mean, yeah. you you have it's the, the really nice thing is whenever you gig in other places outside here, not all comedy gigs are in bars or in venues, mm-hmm. and it's really nice to do that bit of variety. Like you're running one in a coffee shop, yeah, which is class, yeah. I did the first one, then I came off that going like, I'm really good at this. Yeah. And then I think I went and did a gig somewhere else, died my arse, and was like, yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's a nice gig edge, actually. There's, there's one I think we're going to do between now and, I want to say, in between 29th, maybe, we're going to do 29th of December again. Oh, cheeky. So, so yeah, we might throw one on there. So I could give you a shout if you're, if you're free for it. I, I think I am. Yeah, Because my, do that. our Christmas McCooies is the 30th. Mm-hmm. There you go. And that's a Friday, is it? It is a Friday. Ah, it's a Thursday, we're doing it, so. Oh, I keep in touch. Yeah. That's because I loved it. I emceed the very first yeah. one, and the crack was mighty. No, it, it is a lot of fun. And because I know everybody, I also know Will, who owns the place, and he's a yeah. lovely dude. And just really briefly, because I don't know, how, how do you know him? Because he's obviously based in Hollywood, you're based in... Because yeah. he's from Kilkeel and I used to play and he was in a punk band and I was in a I punk band with four guys from Warren Point called Too Fat for Porn. Okay. About 20 years ago. Which is actually what I was told whenever I tried a different career path. Really? Yeah. They were like, nah, mate. What? Too, why? Too Fat for Porn. Ah. Yes. And also Tiny Penis. I'm like, shit, they'll always get me in Oh, I thought ass. they were giving off because you had to like lift up to be oh, seen. Oh, no, no, just that you can't see. It just looks like a wee... <laughs> just a vulva just a wee man vulva well did somebody tell me it, lo- it looks like a, it looks like a mushroom in a cornfield yeah <laughs> nice yeah <it's, laughs> can't argue that's a hard point yeah so did you the, so he's from your neck of the woods then did he's he, from Kilkeel and then when he just did he just move down here or how did he end up here that's, that's uh, I think he married a young American or Canadian lady I don't, I don't want to mix those up yeah. that's culturally insensitive mm-hmm. uh, and he opened the coffee shop and he yeah. still still goes to the punk rock show same as me but I haven't mm-hmm. seen him at a gig in a long time yeah, but uh, no, it, it's all the kids now. So exactly. So I'll be honest with you. There's nothing wrecks your crack more than kids. They're great so. to look at, and like go, oh look, half smile, cute, but also they're a nightmare. Is your next show just going to be called Dave Elliott Better? Could be, yeah. Because every time I try to like change from what I'm doing, and I always end up just giving off about my kids. But people say write what you know, so yeah, true. But have, have you any ideas or any plans for shows coming up in the new year? Any solo shows you would want to? I have about four things I want to do next year. Right, okay. Are you um, allowed to say it anymore? Yeah. So, do you know what? I think if it's mm. good, because if I say it out loud, then I have to do it. Yeah. I can't just be like, that's a good idea, and then not bother my arse. Manifest it. Manif- ma- I manifest it. By manifest, you mean actually go and do the work. Yes. Yeah. Nightmare. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to bring back one of the shows, because it's actually very relevant to what the comedians are all doing at the minute, okay. with the, the boxing. Because I did one of the events before, uh-huh. and I wrote a show about it called Fighting Fit. Okay. Oh, that's right. Is that what you... I did it in the the... What, what was that about? Shaved your head. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was like, yeah, you're a dick. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, a dick. I love that one you did when you were fucking, yeah. When I had the mohawk, yeah. Uh-huh. So that was one of the ones when I was training for that. I didn't I didn't get a haircut or I didn't cut my beard. So I, But then when I got the, um, whenever I got the mohawk, I, I awkwardly looked like a photo negative of Bia Baracus. So yeah, you did. Yeah. Anybody on the age of 35, Google who that was. <laughs> He's the baddie in Rocky Three. Um, yeah. So yeah, I did that and it was it was good fun. We ended up raising, I think, personally, I raised like 1200 Mm-hmm. For like a cancer charity, which was really really good. Which is also you should have just kept it. I'm just for the fucking hassle of yeah. training for eight weeks. Correct, that's true yeah. as well. <laughs> uh, no, actually, a, a weirdly, even though I lost my fight on points, but mm-hmm. a weirdly positive experience. Yeah, and are you involved then in the in this new project of comedians boxing? I am, but I don't have an opponent. Uh, mm. My the initial opponent that was found for me has a show on that night. And who, can you say who that opponent was? I was supposed to be Andrew, but he's busy. A-Ray? Andrew Ryan? A-Ray, yeah. Yeah. So nice. he's he's in the, he's doing his own show in the, in the black box. I think it's near sold out, but yeah. he'll get what, tickets. What date, very, what very date uh, is it on? I'd need to check the book. Because I'm not, I'm not doing it. You're not doing it? Nah, just going to referee? Me. Nah, I'm, I'm not even going to get involved. You know, no? Just, which is one of my things that I'm like, nah. Can we not have you do like a WWF running if something's going wrong? I mean, if it was wrestling, I'd be there. But like, if I, I like if I need a hand, can you fucking... Yeah, come in and do a distraction. Just, or I just cheer somebody. I could just be the tall guy, the cuts man. That's enough. 
Yeah. <laughs> I just throw tiles in all every. I just have like a box of tiles. Yeah. I just be like, over, over. <laughs> and be like, fuck sake. Leave my friend alone. I know, uh, stop towel. it. And then if I didn't throw it in, I'd be like, well, he doesn't like him. <laughs> I know. Yeah, have that. Dave Elliott, professional bitch. I know. I, I mean, I could do that. If they could get me like, where, where, what venues have been in? Ulster Hall. Perfect. I could just sit on the balcony like Waldorf and Stadler, both combined, just <laughs> throwing tiles. He's People. not half bad. He's yeah. all bad. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, is there anybody who isn't doing it that stands out? You're like, oh, they they aren't doing it. You're surprised about? Uh, well, I thought you would have been involved. Yeah, nah. Look, but you've done your fitness and training stuff before. Yeah, so I thought but you'd be like this dude can do eight weeks I and hammer the fuck out of somebody. But I'm 36. I have. I'm 37. I have weak teeth. I have sensitive How do you nose. know? I just, because I, I, I went to the um, hygienist this week and I nearly cried. So I don't want my face to be punched. Getting a scrub? Yeah. Getting a fucking, I don't know what they do. They just get really sharp needles and scratch your gums for fun, I think. You ever been punched in the face before? Oh, why? Yeah. Yeah. You, you want to play team sports and stuff, don't you? Why? Well, yeah. there you go. I don't like, but I don't like it, there. Nobody likes it. I know, I'm just saying, but it's not a surprise. <laughs> yeah, but again, I... I am a big boxing fan. I enjoy boxing. I like the art, the sweet sound. Well, don't I come feel, to this end because it's going to be yeah, terrible. But I feel like... It's going to be a bad advert for the sport. I would have to fight somebody like Colin and all would happen there be one of the, the two of us would hit, would hit a lucky punch and we'd be the other one would be not feeling great. you know, Or else we'd just slug it out and then we'd be like, oh, that was a waste of time. I, th- I feel like that's... I mean, what happens when you go to those white-collar events mm-hmm. is no matter how well-trained somebody is, the main point is you're just trying to be fit yeah. because... I, I noticed that with the one we did was uh, I get the crap kicked out of him in the first round sort of evened it up in the second and then mm-hmm. I won the last round yeah but that was just because I was just fitter than the guy yeah whereas he hammered the shit out of me for two minutes and I was like oh yeah and then he was knackered yeah so I was like I'm actually getting in here to hit him but can you win like could you knock somebody out no not the, no. the way because you weren't headgear and they, yeah. they give you the big he- not heavy gloves they're, oh no they are heavy gloves but it means yeah. it's really hard to knock somebody out it's like hitting mm-hmm. the head with a pillow Right, so okay. They don't. They don't hurt. It's more of an agitation. The Listen. worst box I got doing it was the guy missed, uh-huh. and he kind of scored me with the glove. So yeah. I got like a leather burn on my face. Ooh. That hurt worse than the full. Yeah, dig. Yeah, I got like a straight left on the nose, and I was like, yeah. "That was okay." But this it took like a week to heal. Yeah, and just <laughs> and the stinginess of it too. It's like ah, you yeah. don't want. That's what it was. I keep yeah. forgetting. You wash your face. And you're like, <gasps> yeah, why well, don't do that? So I'd be grand. You just wash. <laughs> no, I don't. I just stand in the rain and cry. <laughs> That does the job for me. Shawshank. Yeah. But listen, if it was MMA, I'd give that a rattle for fun. I think it'd be more crack. I usually wait, land him and just... Yep, submit. Just like, yeah. Shock the world. Submit, you choking him and just land him. Fuck Just him. jump. <laughs> and then be done. But no, I don't know. I just I just don't... It just doesn't appeal to me. You know, it's just... It's not for me. I think if it's going to be for a good cause. Like, I, I, I hate the idea of getting beat up for free, but... Um, no. I'd, no. I'd rather do it if it was just for nothing. Oh, like yeah. if we were just pocketing the cash? Yeah, I'd just take it, yeah. Here's your fighter's that. purse. I know, there you go. But no, There's no money in this, it's just a purse. Yeah, enjoy but it. I do, I, I've heard some of the, the matchups, and I think they're a bit strange. I thought that too. Mm-hmm. It's one of those ones where, because one of the ones whenever Andrew wasn't in it, I was offered, somebody said about uh, Sean Hegarty. Uh-huh. Now, Hegarty is actually fit, so I was like, yeah. no, because yeah. he'll fucking hammer me. Yeah. But would you be, you'd be a bit heavier than him, would you? Or would you be mm, more about the same? Probably about the same. But Hegarty's taller. Yeah, right, okay. He would quite literally be punching down. Yeah. And you should never do that in comedy. I know, Don't I, ever punch I know down. Shane's fighting t- Johnny Bo. That's such a fix for the audience. I, I, I don't see that one as a fair fight. No. Really. I, I said that too. But I would love Johnny to knock him out. <laughs> I would love that more than anything in the world. Johnny's like, you know, you think I'm... But I just I just don't think they're a similar weight. To be fair, whenever we were, had a wee five aside a wee while ago, mm. Johnny's got fucking the feet on him. So if yeah. he's got the hands too, yeah. he's a dancer. If he can yeah, move, he, there you go. So you know what? Again, I think curiosity may kill the the big pussy. Like I might have to go down and have a watch, like just to see. Just having a carry it, just, right, yeah, boys? just yeah. And I, I, I think how much more fun we'll have. You're all fucking stressing out, getting a dig in, and it's all exhausted. And I'm just it's all. all do you know what you should fun. do? See, I'm assuming that I don't know if how they do it. If it's going to because the the boxing ring will be in the middle of the Ulster Hall. Uh-huh. You should just bring like your own chair and just sit on the stage with tins. I mean, I think not. How's, and on a mic, how's that yeah. going, boys? He's all right. Because I think now I've played the Ulster Hall 
a couple of times I think that, that you get that officially as a prize so you can just go whenever suits and sit on the stage oh. whenever you want it's like you know when you get the like freedom like you know the, the security guy at the back door yeah like, Mervy, I just, fucking in. and I'd be like is, is the, you know why like in the uh, opera house they have one of the changing rooms is the the May, the May McFetridge changing room the, the, so it's like officially hers or whatever I think I should have like a maybe one of the wee seats at the very back beside the organ or something now I just sit there like a bit where the where, like where the choir stands, you yes, just sit there, just sit there. Your legs off. Yes, just having my my feet would dangle very twenty eight <laughs> inches, mate, or my legs very short. Are you? Yep. You're definitely taller than me, though, aren't you? Yep, I'm six foot, but I've very short legs. I have a long <laughs> upper body and head, but my like, like because my seat is so low here, but it's like I'm like a freak. Dude, I need to measure it because yeah, because yeah, I'm like thirty two, thirty two. Yeah. Evens. Nope, I'm, I'm a wee um, square. I'm not evens. You know, I'm a, I'm not at all. But I'm, I'm tall, and it's, it's just a... Fr- I don't know what it is. It's freaky. Buying jeans must be no crack. It is a nightmare, because I have to wear 30, and they're just too long for me now, so... You must have been loving it whenever, like, the wee, the wee sailor roll-up became I fashion. Because that was just it. your jeans. But then, nowadays, kids, and you say kids, I'm so old, guy, younger men wear those, like, like I call them, like, Asian mother trousers. You know, or like three quarter length trousers, <laughs> like a wee Asian mother would wear, like, like in all the movies. So like Aaron McCann wears them, same Vittorio wear them, and it just seems to be the fashion now. I could just buy them and wear them as normal jeans, you know. Just buy you, just buy normal jeans, but just, they're just yeah, like a but 20 at 20 And it'd be perfect, you know, a 20 at 20 come on, fuck's sake, 20 at 40 more like. <laughs> but um, I think I think that's, just fashion is something I do not, believe it or not, keep on top of anymore. You're talking to a 37 year old man in a Metallica t-shirt, I, yeah, I feel your pain. That's fair, that's fair. Yeah. And would you I'm more, still dressing like but, I'm in the band. But you'd be more in the fashion than I would be, even I would say. Like you, you you take care of yourself. You know, you get the hair smart you wear. I just black t shirt, jeans, trainers that are functional. That does me. If by fashion you will you mean I, I found a Fred Perry t shirt in Depop? Yes. Yeah. Well there you go. And do you feel like do you feel your age? No. Mm-hmm. I don't not that I don't feel me, I don't act my age. That's it. that's probably a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. but um, no, I will hang on to my youth as long as I possibly can. I'm going to a, a like a metal festival ne- next year. Uh, where is it? It's uh, Download in Donington. Me and my mate are going to go over and cling on to our youths yeah. and be dying of hangovers and tents in potentially 30 degree heat. But that, or torrential rain, whatever See, is there any like hotels nearby? There is, but they're about £4,000 because there's 100,000 people mm. coming to this festival. It's next to a, a wee town and that has about two hotels in it. See, what I would have done is I'd be listening, I'll go to download because I would like some of the bands like, who are playing there, any of the, who are the big headliners, Metallica. They're doing nice. two nights, two separate sets. Very nice. That'll be great. That what, be cool. what Metallica would you want? Like old school 80s Metallica or? Well, whenever you go see them, like, they chop everything up. As long okay. as they're not playing like St. Anger, should be fine. Yeah, every night. Four Every times, night. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'd say yeah, yeah four thousand yeah. times a night. But <laughs> no, two two separate two separate sets. So one's on the Thursday, one's on the Sunday. So they open the festival uh-huh. and close the festival. Right. Okay. I thought it'd just be cool to go there and see that because I've never mm. heard of that happening before. See if I were to go to a festival, I like the look of Rock Am Ring. I'd like to go to that. It's I've been Germany, to Rock Am Park, uh-huh. which is the companion festival. So is Rock Am Ring is at the Nuremberg yeah. Ring. Rock Am Park is in Nuremberg, mm-hmm. also known as Nuremberg. Okay. So not Nuremberg, it's Nuremberg and Nuremberg. Whoa, a lot of Bergs. Nuremberg in German is Nuremberg to you and I. Yes. So when you're at the festival, you can still see the the buildings where like Hitler used to do. Have you ever heard of the Nuremberg rallies? Oh, like, everyone I, knows the Nuremberg listen, trials. I have I have a GCSE in history. I have all the books. Love it. See Hitler, underrated author, great guy. <laughs> Only joking, not Kanye West. <laughs> Imagine joking. somebody cuts that as the yeah, clip. Probably will. Ben, and that's Dave Gott. Yeah. <laughs> Just four seconds, you go, Hitler, underrated. Great guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's one of the best, <laughs> finest guys you'll ever meet. Yeah. But no, they have, so Rock and Park has that where it's, um, uh, it's at that park, right, which okay. was purposely built by the Nazis. But now they're basically the people in Germany are like, we should take this negative and make it a positive. Yeah. So it's a big music festival and it's really, really good. And who were on? Who were some of the bands that you saw? Oh, that was like 2013 there. So mm-hmm. I got to see, it was very random. I saw, who was one of the headliners? Green Day headlined one night. 30 Seconds of Mars headlined another night. Mm-hmm. But I got to see Ice Cube <laughs> immediately followed by a Viking metal band called Amon and Marth. Yes, they're good. They are class. Yeah, they are and they, they, their stage set was a full Viking longboat. And then the headliner that night on the second stage mm-hmm. was Limp Biscuit. Nice. Now, I, at the same stage yeah. six hours earlier, I was watching Stereophonics. It was quite the mix. Yeah, because I mean, you're you're the same generation as me and Limp Biscuit get a lot of shit. 
But I think they're great. I had a red baseball hat. I can't. Yeah. I can't deny my Limp Bizkit past. Yeah, but th- even now, like listening to them, some of their songs hold up still. They're great. Uh, the Limp Bizkit connection as well is I used to love playing the intro to My Generation uh-huh. as my drum warm up because yes. it's very complex. It is all right. And the lyrics are John Otto, take him to the Matthews Bridge. There you go. Yeah, and that's a that's a tough drum. Yeah, it is. There's yeah. a lot of footwork, but it's great. I love it. I love it. it. Cool. I, I love drums. I don't play drums, but I love drums, and I, th- that's a wormhole I get into a lot on YouTube. Drummers. Oh yeah. Yeah. Have you heard of the guy? I think he's called El Esperanto something or other. He is the greatest drummer of all time. Uh, he's one of the few uh, YouTube channels that I subscribe to. So I shall tell you what El Siberiano something something. But he is brilliant. El. I, d- I don't. I don't. Want, I watch a bit of stuff on Instagram. I wouldn't watch like, people do stuff on YouTube because it makes me sad then that I don't get to play as much. He's called El Estepario Siberiano. And he is he is the best. You sure he wasn't a professional footballer? Yeah, so let me see. Didn't he box for Cuba in nineteen eighty eight? Um He did all right, but <laughs> I'll show you one of his one of his clips, but he's just uh, this. Oh, I have seen this guy. He did the one where he held up the clock because yeah. nobody believed he was doing it. Yeah. Yeah, that was very, very cool actually. Yes, so this is double kicking. That's yeah. that's tremendous. Difficult. And yeah. you you know who else is great? Have you heard of Polyphia? No. They're like a a very good just instrumental rock band quite like experimental as well okay and their drummer is just wild like in a different way he's not like hard wild he's just the stuff he plays is incredible oh they, they do a song called playing god which i mean i don't know how this i mean ben will probably absolutely hate that i'm doing this but you know what he's not here to produce it so he can get <laughs> fucked so let me see if you're I like can... can we put this over the top of this you shouldn't add fuck you yeah, yeah. you aren't here so you can eat a bag <laughs> Of cock. Um, yeah, we could play this nice tinny uh, sounding thing. So what do you call them? Polyphia. So, I shall... So, well, while you're searching this, my favourite drummer is a guy called Josh Freeze. Oh, who's he play for? Everybody. Oh, right, so he's like uh, the, the session. He's the dude. Josh Freeze has played from everybody from Nine Inch Nails mm-hmm. to Britney Spears. Nice. I swear to God, he's fucking played He's like your man Taylor Hawkins. He had done, like, he played for Alanis Morissette before the... Yeah, that's Fighters, how you get hired for the yeah. He, yeah. Used to, um, he and Alanis used to be romantically involved. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, uh, he's a big loss. Sad. Poor Taylor Hawkins. I know. But this guy here, right, um, playing God playthrough, right? Oh, so oh this, this is the actual drummer? Yeah. So this, we'll play the actual... We'll play Just the, after this advert. The song. I know, they, they get you, don't you? Because <laughs> I'll never pay. Yeah, ever. yeah. You're like, as soon as you try and so, put it on, you're like, never. Like you, as a drummer, you can watch this and tell, like, the song's nice, but some of the skills he has is impressive. Clay. Big shout out to Clay Ishelman. Yeah, Ishelman. Ishelman, I think. Ishelman. How we watch this? Where are they from? They're American. I mean, this is great podcast content. When we say Ishelman, I definitely think like Scandinavian. He's from Nuremberg. He's from Nuremberg. Is that, this is the connection. Nice yeah. drum setup. I like that. I like that yeah. kit uh, collaboration or but like setup. Oh wow. Nate, isn't it? Isn't Yeah, it's like s- fucking samba. It's like yeah. 15 different types of music at once. But it's impressive drumming, isn't it? Yeah, dude's everywhere. Yeah. and he's But he's very controlled. Yeah, yeah. Because I like wild drumming too, another? but then I like a wee bit of, bit of that too. No, that's a very nice setup, actually. He's got all the extra bits, a couple mm. of splash cymbals. Yeah, beautiful. Apologies, because if you don't play drums, yeah. you don't give a shit about the last funny. five minutes. I don't play drums at all. Don't know how to. No, no rhythm. Love it. Could watch that shit all day. And again, it's probably from John Otto to bring it back because I thought like a lot of his rhythms were amazing. John Otto's a trained jazz drummer, that's why. He ain't, he ain't a rocker. And you know what, another thing I liked about John Otto, and this is probably going to sound a little bit sly, but hey, this is the podcast. I could relate to him. Fat guy doing well. You know, I just thought to myself, Lil Chunk, doing well. Yeah, looks like Mr. Toad from Wind the Willows for Plato. Mm-hmm. And see, nowadays, he's heavier. You know, so he's just like a wee fat old man, but he still he can still take it to the massive So now, now, now he looks like Penfold from Danger Yeah, but he still got it. Cool. He still got the still got the. Why last him? Because they were back doing shows. Because they had a new song. Like I liked the their song Dad Vibes, obviously, and it was it was great. <laughs> you know, it's like I, I used that as walk on music. It's like that's a great tune. Yeah. But that was like vintage Limp Bizkit back again, and they did one before. What was it? Um, thingy was in it bizarrely, which they didn't need to have. Um, Lil Wayne. They did one. Oh, a collaboration? Was that yeah. Golden Cobra? No, no it, probably it, after it was that. Bef- it was actually before that album, I think. It was uh, Ready to Something, Ready to Go. Good song. And I thought, they're back. But, but they get a lot of hate. Why do you think people hate Limp Bizkit? You think they're shit? I think it was a point where they were so popular. Stuff, yeah. stuff can get really, really popular and then people hate it. Mm-hmm. Like Lost Profits. 
Well, that was a different reason for hitting them. <laughs> Joking. Yeah. I'm determined to get cancelled in this episode today. It's happening. <laughs> Don't take yeah, me with no. you. I'm generally quite nice. No, no, no. They, they, they're awful. Well, I mean, they're not awful. The guy with the same name as the guy from Steps, awful. Yeah. yeah. I was all, I was about to say they had some bangers, but he was the banger. That was the problem. Yeah, uh, to, yeah he shouldn't have been banging. Prison, banged yeah, up. Yeah. Was I mean, good. And hopefully after. he remains in prison. And they bring back court a capital punishment. There you go. Uh, oh, no, I mean, not that. Usually what happens is, you know, uh, nonces are routinely beaten in prison. Yeah. So... Good for him. Good. Good, good. luck to him. Uh, well, I think we're all, I think we're all on board beaten. for that. Yeah, I hope he gets beat. All aboard the non-speaking train. Yeah, I don't, like, I don't support the death penalty, but uh, torture for the rest of his days, fine. But I do support the death penalty because it's something to do. It's not something to something watch. To something to read about in the news, isn't it? Somewhere so, to hang your hat. Yeah, exactly. Quite literally. Yeah. <laughs> and the rest of you. While you're out of here, it's a good time. <laughs> I, I actually did a joke recently and it... It got audible gasps from the crowd. <laughs> what was it? Can you say it, or are you going to use it again? No, I, I, um, well, no, I could, I could probably try it again. I'm afraid to try it again because it was one of those ones. Where, you know, you think you've written a clever joke, and then mm-hmm. everyone goes, huh, and you go, oh no, sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Share with the group. <laughs> I basically tried to tell a story about. Um, I, oh, sorry, I was so I was on my holidays, mm-hmm. uh, and it was it was written about a guy who uh, had been sentenced for a crime, and he was given the death penalty. Mm-hmm. Now, at the time, the death penalty was. Um, the, so the, the guy who was telling me the story he was basically like the death penalty at the time was firing squad mm-hmm. and I was like okay cool and I was like and what happened I goes did he get shot and he says no they gave him a suspended sentence instead <laughs> I says he got away with it he said no they hung him alright <laughs> <laughs> I got it yeah. <laughs> and people were like oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> people were like fuck it hell. but I was like yeah. I thought that was clever a suspended yeah, sen- yeah I like that okay yeah. but they no. Will I do it again? <laughs> yeah, I, it's worth trying. But again, I would do it in an area where you have fans of comedy that can get a joke. Let her like, it. oh, I see the bit he did yeah, there. I, yeah, I would do it somewhere like that. I wouldn't say do it like on a cold Wednesday and Donald <laughs> Toxic at Lavoie there, you know. But I had a joke at my dad's show. The, avoid and Donald? Okay. Yeah. yeah, I would. Um, I uh, did a show, I did a joke at my dad's show, which was one of my favourites. It was actually my closer. And it was like about what I learned about becoming a dad. One was like, the f- I learned three things. I learned that um, you can cope with no sleep. You just have to pour on through. I learned that I could multitask, so I could make bottles and I could, you know, hold a baby and I could change a baby all in one go. And the last thing I learned was that I'm too heavy to hang myself. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that was <laughs> my closure. But it was very much when you said and you just kind of go, and then the people are like, oh, and they get it because they're like, oh, he, tri- he tried. Ah, oh, you know, it's. So, so, yeah. so comedy fans, that's yeah. what we call a rule of three. I, yeah. I, that's most of my act. Um, but mm-hmm. they're lovely. Yeah. That's, that's actually Thank you. technique. Yeah. I like that. Thanks, it was a lot of fun. Speaking of technique, I, I, I mugged you a little bit earlier because I was busy, as I said at the start, when I was eating my oats and whatnot, and I didn't um, put a call for questions up. But we have some. Oh, so, really? Yes. Let's see. Dude, you're... I just put one up way better if I, if I ask for questions for next week, no one will get back to me. <gasps> I have a message. Oh, no. I mean, th- that's why, Darren. There you go. You get your phone out and had a message on your own personal phone, and it went, ah! No, it's, uh, no, it's, it's nothing related to what we were talking about at all. I don't believe I've got any questions. Um, no. Well, I have one at least. There you go. And I one of them is I've mentioned you. There you go. Hold on. Um, boop, 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 boop. Patrick, fa- fan of the show, friend of the show, friend of comedy and friend of life, has said, does promoting your big shows and gigs take some of the fun out of the job itself or is it something that has to be learned to do as it's part of it? Uh, does it take the fun like, when you just have to do everything yourself yeah, yeah. that's way less fun but like promoting shows like because uh, for me personally I hate being like oh I'm doing my show come and see it blah blah here's a poster it's like I just I just don't like I just don't feel comfortable with doing that that, do you know that does I mean? feel terrible that is mm-hmm. definitely that's something in us that's where we're from uh, yeah. where it's the thing where it's like I want attention but I can't just go Come look at me. Yeah, I'm a middle child, so I don't know what your excuse is. Yeah, well, some people are, love it. Some people are like, I'm, they're happy to say, look at me. For oh. me personally, it's just not my thing. I just don't like doing it. I struggle with it. I find it uncomfortable. No, because a lot of my comedy is how fucking awkward I am or look yeah. what a dickhead I am. So when, when, I can't just be like, it's one of those things where I go, come to my show and people go, are you any good? I'm like, oh, I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> see, that's another one. Now, what I should say is, yeah, I'm yeah. worth 20 quid. Yeah. Come but see the show. It's hard to say that, isn't it? Yeah, it's I feel like I'm such a scumbag after. I know. Yeah, absolutely. Come along and say yeah. it's great. And you're like, Ugh. Whereas if I'm promoting someone at like a show with other acts on, yeah. I'm like, I'm hosting it and I'll, I'll make everybody feel lovely. Yes. And then these guys are great. But see, that's the thing too. That Do you ever find yourself, because um, I think it's something like I MC 
through needing to for the sake of a gig around. I told you if you needed a night off, mm-hmm. I'll come down and do it. But do you ever find that, because you are such a good MC, do you ever find sometimes that you're like, I don't want to MC tonight, I want to fucking do a set? Yes. All the time. But now because I do that, people, I've started asking people to please book me for sets. Mm-hmm. People are like, can you do it? Oh, please. Can I just, yeah. you know, please, sir. But can I, I have 10 minutes? <laughs> but to MC is, anyone could, I think, not anyone, because obviously they're very skilled thing to do but MC in is more difficult because obviously you're not always doing material you maybe throw a wee bit in there but you have to gauge the room and to me I, I always remember thinking being an MC was like doing a wedding speech being a best man your job is not to get the big laugh your job is to set something up and to make it welcoming is that how you find it? It's it's not your show you're, you're pretty much it's like you're the rep for the crowd mm-hmm. you're sort of setting it up like we're all mates and we're going to have a lovely time and tonight's going to be so much fun and you do all the bits and pieces, and mm-hmm. you're, and then you're doing material to get them used to it, or you're chatting to people. Uh, I, I tend not to be. I'm not very mean when I MC, yeah. but if somebody like tries to start shit, I'll end their life. Yeah, you know, I, you've seen me MC. So it's like yeah. he's pretty good. Somebody haggles, you go, oh, she'll not have done that. From Bestbrook, that's why you know he just <laughs> bite them in the neck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, you will never be found. But um, no stuff. So stuff like that is, uh, yeah, it's definitely. Do you know what? It's definitely a skill set because mm-hmm. I've seen people who go, I'm going to run my own show. I'm like, oh, cool. Who's MC? And they're like, I am. I'm like. Okay. And uh, how do you get yourself into the mood for it? Because sometimes I'll take up the gig and be like, I could not be fucking arsed with this shit. For MCing? Uh-huh. Well, because I'm normally doing the door also, I have approximately 30 seconds to get into the mental headspace to walk on stage and go, hey, hey, hey. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, we're going to have a great time. Uh, yeah, normally I'm just like, oh, I think that's everybody in. Uh, you all sorted? You know when you're on? Yeah, then there's a running order for everybody. You, you know what's going on? Okay, right. Turn those lights off. And then I go, who's on? Me. Oh. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I run up and I'm like, hi, everybody. Yeah, and have you ever had any acts like you know, disappear or something and not be there when you've called them on stage or anything like that? Uh, thankfully not. Have you? Have you I ever mean, had where you name someone and, just, and the door doesn't open? Well, there was one gig I did, I think it was in Newry Football Club, where the, the, the guy running the gig and hosting it um, had to ring me and was like, oh, I've just called you on stage and you're not here. However, what was amazing was that that actually, because I'm such a good MC, mm-hmm. that worked really well. Yeah, it actually did. <laughs> <laughs> It then looked like we'd pre-planned this, like because yeah. I had you on the mic and uh-huh. they could hear you going, "Are you really on stage right now?" And I was like, "Yeah, you get down here." And I was like, <laughs> and then you go, "Oh fuck!" And when you hung up your phone, it was a big laugh. Yeah. Then you appeared sweating because you had the run know, fourteen had sprint, meters. You know, probably <laughs> the, probably the fastest anyone's run in that stadium for years. Like, and I fucking just the way made it, but I, it was it was a great time. It was it was very very cool because I knew a period being like here yeah. and you were like I am so sorry, <laughs> not even your normal in, not your normal no. opener your normal intro. No. I was just like I am so sorry. About uh, that. Listen, I fucked this guys and I'm sorry. <laughs> um, speaking of which, it's been a lot of fun chat. It's just felt like we've just been having a chat over a beer with no beers, just beer sitting there but not opened. Um, so where can people find you, Darren? What's what's going on? What have you got coming up in, in the new year? New year is going to be so you can always find me at the Sunflower Comedy Club, which is the last Sunday of every month. Uh, go find that on the various socials and do you have socials for the club itself the club only has a Facebook because okay. I got it off somebody else <laughs> um, <laughs> the guy who's run it before me was like here take this and I was like oh, mm-hmm. it'd be great if you also had a TikTok with 10,000 fans but it doesn't happen uh, then I have my own Insta which has got all the stuff on it that's just Darren Matthews Comedian very handy annoyingly yeah. enough uh, Darren Matthews is the real name of professional wrestler William Regal so you if you google me that's who you find yeah, nightmare because he's way more fam- famous than me. But well, you should do a show then called Darren Matthews Regal, <laughs> and then just yeah, talk about that and get him on board because I believe he would do it. He's, uh, he's out think, of work. I think, think, it, I think he's just been released by AEW. So, yeah, but I think he's going back to WWE. Good, that's his home. That's your other podcast. Though. Yeah. I'll be on that someday too. I have so well, much knowledge of. I mean, th- six people listen. That's so don't worry. Um. <laughs> well, I mean, I could be seven. There you go. <laughs> and speaking of going home, are you going back to back to God's country? I say that, uh, it's not North Down, gross. Uh, go back to South Down. <laughs> you know, the secondary, you know, the Lucifer's land. <laughs> okay, right, hang on. Yeah. Now, you know that mm-hmm. Nuri divides between two. So yeah, stop I accusing do. me of being from... You keep saying South Down. I'm not from there. But, but I just like Down. I'm a Down guy. A lot of people say to me, you look like a Down guy to me. You know, you have the, you have the look, you look a wee bit Downy. And I'm like, I know, North Down. No, uh, that's not what so when we stop okay. recording, I'm going to have to uh-huh. have a chat with you about that. All right, okay, okay. It's just, if they say you look a bit... Downs, okay. that's oh, not, not, I thought, all right. Oh, so, wow, this is really awkward now. Yeah, so, so where, where, where are you? Yeah, uh, South Panic Armagh, South Armagh. Pa- yeah, yeah. Panic Panic Season Comedy Club, Club in Newry, on the Armagh side of the river. Nice. You know, so just keep keeping that as orange Get as possible. Get that yeah. It's about the only orange in Newry before. So, yeah, um, true. That <laughs> Apart from when I go to visit Mant, who's now dead. So whenever I go to the blessings of the grave, 
that's whenever it gets a wee bit When more you go to the Church of Ireland, there's yeah. one less. Um, oh, but see, whenever she got buried, Jesus Christ, I, I only see this, that side of things when I go to funerals. Okay. You know, so there's there was a guy, and I don't know if he's a known guy, but he was like a, an undertaker or a funeral guy anyway, and he was not very, he didn't have a lot of strength about him. So they had to enlist me and an old guy who must have been 117 <laughs> to try and lower my great aunt's coffin into the ground. And Actually? I was held all the way. And he, he slipped on the, on the turf a bit and nearly went in. I was like, fuck. Oh, you just were giving it yeah, the rope bit? giving it the rope down. And it was oh, nearly, dear. oh, no, look who it is. What, what was that? Shane Todd. What? What? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. You have to come and show your face now, at least. Look, look what he's done. Look what he's done. We were just wrapping it up. We're just about to fight. We, we, we were actually going to call and say hello to you. Oh, yeah. Inception podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so there we go. The Inception podcast and the Films Nerds podcast. Speaking of nerds, this guy. Darren, thank you very much for coming on. Shane, thank thanks you, for busting thank you, in. Mate. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Good it's good to see you. Yeah, yeah you too. Saw him like an hour ago going for coffee. Like, but yeah. Safe home, mate. <laughs> yeah, safe home. Cheers, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for wrapping oh. it up. Yes, wrap That's it up. us, guys. Can you see the intro? Yeah, we're wrapped up. Sly Guy, patreon.com slash Sly Guy podcast. If you want more, we're sponsored by Modest Beer. Um, they do a beer club where if you go to modestbeer.co.uk, you get 12 beers for a pound. Uh, yep. No, that's no, yep. that's not no a thing. that's it. That's the deal. Um, that's not even the postage. And if they don't honour that, um, they will. Bitches get shot. Yeah. Um, so yeah patreon.com Sly Guy Podcast Dave does his nude bonus podcast once a month um, what else Chronicles. yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's, that's that's it guys but keep following keep following this page for more <laughs> like and subscribe Shane you don't have an out for this Darren you got anything to plug <laughs> yeah we just did it before what, you got what, here. what was it <laughs> I'm the Sly Guy